audiophiles, enthusiasts, music lovers, lend me your ears. Is the cassette tape format deader than the wax cylinder or the laser disc? Not a chance. Hi, I'm Bob, and you are in the United States of Analog, and I salute you for being here. Having a young YouTube channel, especially in the crowded audio space, can be a hard grind and highly competitive and very humbling, trust me. Sure, you can get to share your passion of audio and music with viewers all across the planet, but to do that, you need to buy video gear for production. Lights, cameras, bankruptcy. You need, you need to buy audio gear to review. You've got to strike weird accords with your children or get technical advice or maybe just someone to frame a shot for you. And they can be kind of jerks sometimes. If they refer to me as mid one more time, well, that gravy train they're currently riding is going to come to a swift and grinding halt. Now what I'm saying is that there's a lot of dollars and pride that go out the window uh, when you start a channel. In the beginning, and 30 videos in, I, I think I'm still in the beginning, ad revenue is tiny, click-throughs are minuscule, Donations are smaller still, but don't worry about any of that stuff because all the algorithms are already against you. But as you wait for your first video to pop big, uh, you have one thing going for you. As word gets out that you are an uh, influencer, all right? The, <laughs> you become a depository for friends and fans' unwanted gear. Sounds pretty good, right? They just offer it to you. Now, much of it, because of the age and condition, isn't worth the trip to their house to pick it up. But, but you go because you're a good friend and hopefully there's a beer at the other end. But, uh, you know, you only hope that you pass a Goodwill that's open on the way home so you can dump it off, right? So, anyway, every once in a while, the audiophile gods smile upon you and deliver a unicorn like this. A piece of vintage gear that you can actually use and works as advertised without too much expense or fuss. And that's just what happened to me when a friend offered me this Nakamichi MR1 three-head cassette deck. I need to get involved with another playback format like I, like I need another video critique from one of my kids, right? But I accepted it with a smile on my face and I thought, well, it's probably going to have a number of shortcomings and problems when I get it home, like um, uh, worn out heads, uh, maybe the lights are going to be burned out, the lamps or whatever, uh, maybe a deteriorated belt or two. But lo and behold, and I don't even know what lo and behold means, but lo and behold, it's fully functional. And as you can see here, it, it, it cleaned up pretty nicely. Before I came to that conclusion, though, I cleaned the heads, applied detoxit to various areas where I guessed would benefit from detoxit. <laughs> I'm a bad person. Uh, I dusted and cleaned the front and rear panels in the case, sharpied a few small chips and removed the rack ears because I wasn't using it in a rack. Actually, it was kind of fun. It looked like uh, 80 to 90 percent newish when I was, was done. And uh, I, just, I just had to wait a day or so for some cables from Amazon to arrive because the MR1, the version I have without the white dot, and that's going to mean something to somebody out there, um, is actually a pro unit. It has pro inputs. Uh, and outs, no RCAs. So I connected it to a system, I plugged it in, lit it up, put in a pre-recorded cassette, and press play. Guess what? It sounded like ass. <laughs> Sorry kids, but I soon discovered it was actually the tape I selected. It was pretty worn, maybe even bulk erased or something. So I put on a Yes cassette in Dolby Pro and voila, music, beautiful music. Better than I actually remembered cassettes could sound. Now, if you're thinking of diving headfirst into this long forgotten format from the 60s, 70s, 80s, as a public service to the audiophile and music communities, I'm going to supply you with all of the pertinent facts about the cassette format so that you can make an informed decision for yourself, all right? I'm going to graciously, out of the kindness of my heart, provide the five best things about the cassette tape format and five of the biggest pitfalls of the format. But first, a little more about this deck. I think that if you're going to go into the cassette deck realm, you might as well shoot for Nakamichi. If I remember correctly, the brand had a certain gravitas in the audio community back in the day. TAC, Akai, Sony, all great. But it was Nakamichi where the action was. Remember the Nakamichi dragon? Ooh, the dragon. I never actually saw one in the wild, but the MR1 
that I have here was in production from 1989 to 1994. Mine was built in the third quarter of 1992, and I know that because I, the sticker's right on the back. It's a professional unit for studio use. In 1984, it retailed for $1,000 and adjusted for inflation. That's $2,900 in today's moolah. Now, my unit was built eight years later, so surely it listed for higher. Mine was super clean under the hood, as you can see here in the photos, and that's a bonus. Now let's get to it. Let's get to the good stuff. Cassettes are cheap. Yeah. My first haul of like, what, 10 cassettes from a local record store cost me all of like 20 bucks. And, and most of them sounded pretty good. I had to throw one away. Unfortunately, it was the Traveling Wilburys. But um, they sure stir up a lot of memories for me. And cassettes sound great. Not necessarily in the machine on playback, but when you, when you open and close the case and take them out, there's a certain ASMR quality to it that uh, I dig, and, and it brings me more great memories. So I'm really starting to dig this format again. Cassettes are tactile, that's right. If you like doing stuff with your hands, well, cassette playback has you covered. There are cases, there are knobs, switches, sliders, buttons, uh, doors. <laughs> There's gonna be decisions you have to make with your fingers. No Dolby, Dolby B, Dolby C, chrome, metal, pitch, filters, counters, you're going to be doing so much to squeeze the best possible sound out of your deck. You're going to be pressing so many buttons that you're going to feel like the love child of uh, Bernie Grundman and Kevin Gray. Who cares if cassettes don't sound as good as CDs or it's close cousin vinyl? Get over it. Amaze your friends with your ridiculous hobby. Show them your cassette deck. Uh, sit back and just listen. Now, cassettes are also romantic, nostalgic, all the icks. One of the first uh, used tapes I got, where, let's see, right here. Wait, where, where is it? The, it's here, so, ah, this one. 10 CC's Masterpiece, the original soundtrack. There it is right there. This thing is almost 50 years old, and I popped it in the knack for the first time, or the knock, and uh, I hit the play button, and I was stunned when it started right in the middle of I'm Not In Love. Now, I started thinking about the person or people that had owned that particular cassette over the past five decades, who they were, what they did, what were their lives like, and, and the biggest question of all, why would anyone stop one of the greatest songs of all time mid-track? What happened? Did they get a phone call? Was it good news? Was it bad news? Did the cops bust through the door and shut the party down? How many miles has this cassette traveled before ending up in my hands? It's fun, to, it's fun to think about, right? Just try doing that with your silly Spotify. Cassettes provide instant gratification. Pop it out of the case, drop it in the machine, hit play. In the simplest terms, that's all you need to do to be musicking, and that's not even a word. There are probably more attributes. If any come to mind, put them in the comments below, okay? And while you're there, why not subscribe, all right? And and do me a solid. But what does it matter, really, when you've probably already left this video to watch A-Rob discuss room treatments again? Now, vintage gear just doesn't make the algorithms happy. Room correction does, though. Now let's get to some of the not-so-good stuff. Cassettes require maintenance and care, and for some of you, that might be a big plus, right? But if you're the type of person who, say, uh, hates oil changes, well, you know, there are heads to be cleaned, Tape to be kept taut and unchewed. Uh, capstans are in here and rollers that need to be cleaned. There's pinchy things. I don't even know what those things do. But uh, next to the VHS tape, the cassette is one of the most mechanically ridiculous playback formats around. <laughs> and just about any part of it is subject to failure at any time. So keep your fingers crossed. Cassette cases and packaging are really flimsy and cheap. The plastic is brittle, the cases scratch and crack, and they have a drop rating of about three and a half inches. It's definitely not military grade. And remember those inner tabs that used to snap off and the little pins or the little arms that held the two pieces of the case together would break and there's a tiny little booklet in there that doesn't have any information and if it did, you would need uh, your readers. But it does have a certain ASMR quality, right? The cassette, and uh, does bring back memories, like I said. Now, 
Cassettes don't respect the artist at all. While this form of disrespect is worse on the 8-track tape, just pop pop in Leonard Skinner's uh, first album and marvel as side one fades out midway through Freebird, then resumes in time for the guitar solo on the beginning of side two. The original gappy playback. Yeah, cassettes, time is one of their biggest limitations. Cassettes hiss like a leaky Michelin. Tape hiss is a real thing. Sure, you can mitigate it with onboard settings and outboard devices. You can guess which Dolby setting sounds best, but you'd only be guessing. I say save the money and effort and just sit back and enjoy the hiss. <laughs> It'll serve as your reminder that you've entered the wonderful world of tape reproduction and possibly remind you that um, yeah, your tires are running a little low. And finally, I hinted at this in the maintenance section, quality Used decks can be super hard to find and should be checked out thoroughly before you ring the cash register, okay? You got to do it. It's a must. There's a lot of moving parts in here. Repairs are costly and complicated, and you're going to get the stink eye from your local audio MacGyver. There's lots of moving parts. Again, trust me, you've seen the pictures. So choose wisely and accept the fact that the cassette deck, like your very own body, can quit on you at any time. <laughs> and that's life. And like life itself, you pay your money and you take your chances. Worst case scenario, you'll just have to make a return trip to the St. Anthony thrift store to look for another bargain deck or just donate all those cassette tapes you no longer need because you said goodbye to the format. And I guess to add to all of that, the cassette format is by no means the best musically, sonically, I guess I should say. Not now, not ever, never has been. Uh, it would be generous to assign the label audiophile. There's too much compression. Signal-to-noise ratio is bad. Uh, degradation of the actual tape is a thing. It's, it's thin. It's subject to damage. Even the cassette itself, when you put it in, can make a physical noise when everything's spinning, and you can hear it outside the unit. It doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes. I'm sure somewhere in the audio universe, there's an audiophile cassette system. I just haven't found it, and I haven't heard it. But in its defense, and I guess one of its main charms is that most of us have been consuming audio for a while and are used to noisy, compressed music. It's what we, we, we grew up on. We did care. I mean, I can remember hearing uh, Boz Skag, Silk Degrees, while I was on a first date. It was emanating from an 8-track slung under the dash of a Ford Pinto, which, by the way, was not my car. And the, 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 the sound was not audiophile, but I remember that night, and I remember that funky tape, and it was one of the best damn things I've ever heard. It's the music itself that creates the experience. As flawed as some systems are, we can get close to the music. When time and money allow, we can get even closer. And I think that's the goal for a lot of us watching these kind of videos. Uh, when I get to thinking of these vintage formats like cassettes and vinyl, I can make a case that they're even more of a miracle than the compact disc or internet streaming. I mean, let's look at vinyl. It's a destructible plastic disc with grooves in it that you spin at a seemingly arbitrary speed of uh, 33 and a third RPMs, and then you drop a needle in it to make music. And somehow... It's the be-all and end-all in music reproduction for a lot of people. We're pretty damn close. That's miracle number one. Miracle number two, the cassette tape. Thin, brittle, polyester film with a magnetic coating whose micro-metallic particles are rearranged. I scratched my watch. Rearranged and later read by a playback head for your musical enjoyment. Just look again at what it took to make music back in the day. Holy smokes. I'm happy I finally got a knock. I couldn't afford one when I was a punk. It was, uh, it was pretty hard to afford. But is it reference? No, nah, not even close. Does it matter? Not even close. It calls up nothing but good memories and brings me nothing but pure joy and good vibes. Once again, like some of the fun fi gear I've been uh, talking about lately in my videos, uh, it takes away the pressure to achieve total sonic perfection and practically forces you to slow your ass down, stop worrying so much, and find the merit in the music. Now, you won't find much to enjoy in holding that tiny booklet in your hand, right? Again, there's nothing really to read or look at. So just listen and remember a time when the Camaro was king and television was just a hot, blurry mess. 
when your gear didn't say much about you, but the cassette number two of Led Zeppelin's physical graffiti that you were about to pop in your auto reverse Pioneer Super Tuner, well, that pretty much told the world everything about you and who you were. Make hi-fi fun again. And you were just in the United States of analog. I'll see you next time. And viva la cassette.